island of Sodor is surrounded by beautiful blue sea. It has fields of green and sandy yellow beaches. There are rivers, streams, and lots of trees where the birds sing. There are windmills and a coal mine, and docks where visitors to the island arrive. Welcome to the island of Sodor. Rusty, Reneus, and Scarloe chugged cheerfully through the Sodor countryside. The engines were going to help Duncan with an important job at the Incline Railway. The engines enjoy working at the Incline Railway. They liked the clever way the loaded slate cars roll down the incline, pulling the empty slate cars up. But they are always careful. Duncan doesn't like working at the incline railway. He is always impatient to get back to the junction. This makes him careless and gets him into lots of trouble. Rusty hoped Duncan would stay out of trouble today but he was already in too much of a hurry. I'm a plain speaking engine, gruff Duncan. So collect your slate cars and be quick about it. And off he steamed. Bossy boots, chuffed Reneus. Pushy puffer, huffed Scarloe. They didn't like Duncan telling them what to do. He just wants to get back to the bustle of the junction, Rusty said. Duncan wanted everyone to work faster. You're supposed to be helping me, he grumbled, but you're as slow as snails. We're proper engines, Rusty huffed crossly. We follow the rules. We can't send up more than four slate cars at a time, chuffed Reneus. Then work faster, said Duncan impatiently. Later that day, Duncan was working the incline. I'll show you how fast a really useful engine can work, Duncan called as he hastily biffed one slate car into another. And then another. Soon, Duncan had his four slate cars. Nothing to it, he boasted to Rusty. Those slate cars will pay you back, warned Rusty. Slate cars don't like to be biffed. I can handle slate cars, he cried. The three little engines could see Duncan was not going to listen. They carefully chuffed away from the incline with their slate cars full of slate. Duncan was so impatient he became even more careless. I'll show that smelly diesel and those lazy steamers, he said to his driver. Careful, cautioned his driver. You're asking for trouble. And he got it. Duncan didn't notice his chain was tangled in the coupling of the slate car in front of him. Suddenly, he was being pulled up the track by the empty slate cars. Bouncing bogeys, he cried. It's got me. Duncan's driver jumped clear. Rusty returned to see Duncan being pulled up the incline. I tried to warn him, said Rusty. He never listens, the little diesel's driver said. The chain pulling Duncan's slate cars couldn't hold the weight. It suddenly snapped. Duncan plummeted down the incline. Help! He yelled. Glug, 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 he said. Bluggle my bloiler. Duncan felt foolish and very wet. When Sir Topham had arrived, he spoke severely to Duncan. You have not been a responsible engine, he said. 
Your impatience has caused confusion and delay, and you owe these engines an apology. Sorry, Duncan said to Rusty, Reneas, and Scarloe. Once you have been repaired, Sir Topham Hatt said, you will work the incline until you learn to be patient and careful. Yes, sir, said Duncan. <laughs>